Hello, AOG Wealth Clients, and happy March 2024. Spring is almost here. Uh, we want to bring to you a very contrarian uh, position today, uh, having to do with the Federal Reserve. Uh, many of you know that the, the market has been fighting the Federal Reserve for about two years now. It's been wrong the whole time, but there was a strong consensus at the beginning of the year that the Federal Reserve would probably lower interest rates six times by a quarter percent, 0.25 uh, basis points, 25 basis points. And that affects a lot of decisions, uh, refinancing a mortgage, if you have any variable interest rate credit, buying a car, and of course, markets and the economy. And so we wanted to bring you a, a longer video than we normally do. Don't feel like you have to watch the very end, but each of these slides makes a very com um, uh, confident case for the Federal Reserve not lowering interest rates at all for all of 2024. Now this comes to us from the chief economist of Apollo, Torsten Slock. You know, we've been fortunate um, to bring you chief economists from Goldman Sachs, uh, from First Trust several times. Uh, last fall, we had the chief economist for Carlisle uh, live and in person with us, and we're hoping to get Torsten Slock one of these days. So first of all, uh, on slide one, it shows uh, why one of the reasons that they, uh, they don't expect rates to come down is because the economy is in fact strengthening. Um, you know, the Federal Reserve, we, we came into 2023 expecting a recession, didn't happen. We brought to you slides before about the additional $6 trillion of deficit spending that our uh, Congress and the President have added on to our um, a, a debt of $34 trillion. Uh, it's one of the reasons why it artificially propped the economy up. We came into 2024 expecting the six rate cuts. Now that's already morphed quite a bit. There was going to be for sure a rate cut in March. Then it was going to be for sure in May. Now it's 50-50 in the general market of a, of a rate cut in June. Um, we were going to have six rate cuts for sure in January. Now it's more like perhaps three. It's a consensus. But again, Torsten Slack saying no cuts whatsoever. Uh, moving to the next slide. Uh, you'll see that um, underlying measures of trend inflation are all moving higher um, in this chart. And you can see the, the little dip back up here on the right. Uh, these are all good measures. My favorite is the Atlanta Fed. I follow them uh, at least monthly. But these are all good measures of inflation. There's about 100 of them. So this is definitely cherry picking. But these four all show that trend line moving up and to the right. Next, we see that super core inflation also uh, having come down significantly uh, until this uh, first quarter of 2024, and you see that bending back up into the right. Now, this is when we had six, seven, eight, nine percent annualized inflation, so it's much better now than it was. But remember, the Federal Reserve said they're only going to start cutting interest rates when inflation reaches a two percent mark. Maybe they'd start at two and a half or so, but if this line is in fact a trend, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, looking at the uh, next chart, uh, we're looking at um, the Fed pivot point that said that um, labor markets would probably uh, be opening up a little bit uh, and we'd start seeing some layoffs, which we've seen a few, but the labor market generally remains very tight. Jobless claims are very low and wage inflation is still remaining at about 4%. That number needs to come down to about three. Uh, this would, would indicate a strong economy where employers have to pay more uh, to get the employees that they want to be able to use. Uh, the next chart shows the um, National Federation of Independent Businesses and indicates that um, a higher trend in prices paid, uh, another leading indicator of inflation is that number tips back up. And remember that over half of all new jobs are created by small businesses, not by large corporations. Next is the manufacturing uh, survey, the U.S. Uh, Empire State Manufacturing Survey out of New York. And it shows that the higher trend in prices paid, again, beginning to move up not down as, it, as we've seen inflation come down over the last two years. Now we're seeing it tick back up again. The next chart is the Institute for Supply Management, the ISM. And remember that the ISM, if it's under 50, that's a signal for recession. We see it here in the Great Recession of 2007, 8, 9. We see it here uh, when we had the COVID correction. But this, this has been coming down. This is why a lot of people thought we were heading toward recession and it's tipping back up again. So over 50 means, uh, under 50 means we're heading toward recession. Over 50 means that we're heading for expansion. And this number didn't bottom out. It's actually ticking back up again uh, before bottoming out. So the ISM again, uh, the service price is paid uh, heading higher. Uh, next, we have the survey of small businesses um, and what they're looking for in wages. And again, you can see great recession, wages came down. 
during the COVID correction, wages came down. They've been coming down for the last two years, but now we see this tick up here again. And uh, remember that this is a, um, uh, a, a lead indicator of what things are going to do over the next seven months. And small businesses are reporting that they believe they're going to be raising the price on goods and services. And so that's another inflationary signal. Uh, next, we have the um, asking rents, and it's broken down by geography. So you can see the U.S. number, uh, all of them are ticking back up. This is the national number right here, this uh, darker you know, orange-red. But in all four regions of the country, it's either slightly flat or it's ticking up in all those regions. Uh, next, we want to look at what's going on in our cities, our 100 top cities. And you can see that post-COVID, um, uh, cities were mostly having to lower rents here. Now we see the number that are lowering rents actually shrinking down, uh, but that number is beginning to um, strengthen. So this, these are the cities where they are raising um, rents uh, in the large, 100 largest cities. And so again, if the cities are raising rents here, uh, another inflationary signal. Uh, next, we wanna look at um, financial conditions that might point to the Fed pivoting and easing rates. So we're looking at the issuance of high yield um, bonds. Uh, we're looking at investment grade bonds. We're looking at IPO activity, um, uh, initial public offerings, new companies listing on the stock market and going public, as well as private equity firms buying up smaller firms, merger and acquisitions. And so you can see that this lead number shows this bottoming out and then ticking back up again, another potentially inflationary signal. Now, next, we're looking at a rebound in GDP growth. And so typically the Fed says that they want to see GDP growth at about 2%. Um, ideally, 3% shows a better growing economy. 2% is kind of a economy in the doldrums, but you can see these numbers are heading back up north of four. So in summary, this is very much a minority position. Most economists believe that the Federal Reserve is going to lower interest rates later this year. Um, but again, if you look at uh, Jerome Powell's comments, um, he recognizes history, and he knows that in the 1970s, as I've mentioned before, um, Robert Burns was the head of the Fed back in the 70s. He lowered interest rates too soon, and for those of you that either read it in the history books or are old enough to have experienced it, uh, we know that once they let inflation out of the gate a second time, it was almost a half decade of absolute misery. President Carter actually gave a speech calling it the misery index and said that we had malaise in the country. Misery, misery index, uh, unemployment over 10%, inflation over 10%. It was an awful time for the US economy. And that's what Jerome Powell fears. If he lowers interest rates too soon, and he shares that with the rest of the Federal, Federal Reserve governors, lowering in, interest rates too soon will make things much, much worse in the years following. So, uh, you know, we're still debating within our investment committee how much weight to give this information from Torsten Slack. The nice thing about it is these are facts. Now, there are other graphs and charts you could point to showing the, the, the case for the Federal Reserve uh, lowering interest rates, but these are compelling facts and among the best indices that we track. So it's hard to disagree with Torsten Slack on the facts, and frankly, his conclusion makes sense. So. As anything, we're continuing to monitor the portfolio, the economics, and to um, you know put the highest risk adjusted return we can put together for our clients. Uh, but this is a strong concern that the Federal Reserve uh, continues to hold interest rates where they are. I mean, theoretically, they could even raise them a little bit if these trend lines continue. Uh, but when Jerome Powell says we don't have enough information yet, what he means by that is there's concern. And so if these lines continue to point up and to the right of a growing economy and all these other factors, uh, the market will at some point say, we've been wrong for the last two years, we're still wrong. And at that point with a 22%, a, a 22 multiple in the S&P stock prices now, you'd have to hold it for um, uh, 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 22 years to get your money back just based on the, the, the earnings ratio. At a 22 PE, that's a very frothy market. And so if the conclusion is that the Federal Reserve either keeps rates the same or perhaps even raises rates, which I've not heard anybody talking about, that would be cause for a significant market correction. So um, stay tuned. Uh, for those of you that listened all the way through, congratulations. You're almost as nerdy as me. But these are compelling facts and uh, we'll do our best. Hopefully we can, um, I'm going to talk to a group from Apollo in a couple of weeks 
and uh, we'll see if we get Taurus and Slog down from New York for a client briefing. We are going to do a briefing with uh, Bob Stein from First Trust in June. As you know, this is an election year for the House Representatives, for a third of the Senate, and of course the presidency. And he's been a great handicapper who brings both political as well as economic information. So for those of you that are in the area, uh, we'll have a date out in the next month or so uh, for June for when we're going to host Bob Stein, the Deputy Chief Economist of First Trust. But we'd love to get Torsten Slockdown for his view on the economy. Thanks for listening.